What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am so excited for today's video because we are announcing a mini-series. It's actually the first mini-series that we're announcing on the channel and actually doing, um, as you can tell by the title, it's going to be a, a hot topic one too and it's going to be ongoing because these tests are going to take a couple months to actually start getting information back and actually running them through the car. So um, I also have a couple announcements. We're going to jump into the announcements and we're going to jump into the video topic. So first of all, we are doing a giveaway. Details are going to be in the description, but we are giving away in the spirit of the mini series and the topic that it's about, we're giving away an air oil separator. Ooh, I'm excited. It's going to be a parent air oil separator. Uh, we're working with the mod garage on this one to help get that out to you guys. So the details are going to be down below of how you guys can uh, get entered into that drawing to get that. Um, I'm going to be covering the costs on it. They're just really helping out by supporting the channel to do this. So they're going to be shipping it out to whoever ends up winning, but like I said, the description's going to be down below. Also, ooh! We got a Chia Pet! Chia Pet for the garage. So now, you know, I don't know why I'm so excited about this, but I really like Chia Pets. And it's a unicorn. Hell yeah. So, as you guys are ready for and excited for, as hopefully as much as I am, we're doing this mini-series on oil. When it comes to these cars so i'm going to be sending a lot of oil analysis tests out to blackstone labs who actually take the oil they run it through a spectrometer and they give me the detailed results back from just what is actually going on in the oil whether um, what minerals are in it what metals are found in it and everything associated with that and it's going to be exciting we're going to run different oils at different intervals different weights all the good ones we're going to uh, the first one that we're doing right now is uh castrol gtx ultra clean we're going to get into the report a little later in the video because we're going to go over breaking down on how to read these oil analysis reports uh we're going to be doing rotella mochul any other oils that you guys want to see go ahead drop them in the comments we will get those tested and ran through the car the only one that i am not willing to test is royal purple don't even try to post that royal purple stuff down in the comments because i am not doing it nope not today so like i said we're going to get this camera set up. We're going to start running through how to actually take one of these oil analysis tests, read it, so that way we know what we're talking about when we're looking at them. All right, so like I said, something I want to touch on before we actually jump into some of the details of this oil video is the, I, I do want to touch on Rotella T6 for men because a lot of people run this oil. Now, I've done a lot of research into looking into this, and with that, what I've come to find is Rotella T6 is a generally accepted wide used oil in the Subaru community. Now with that, I think that's partially because it's such an available oil that you can pick up at any of your local retailers and auto parts stores. So it's easy to use, it's readily available, and it works pretty well in these cars. Now the theory behind that working well is with 5W30 and 5W40, 5W40 is going to be Rotella T6, 5W30 is going to be any standard oil that Subaru recommends. With 5W40, it's a little bit thicker of an oil, so it's a little more viscous, but we're going to get into viscosity in a minute, so if you don't quite catch up on this part, you'll understand here in a second. Now because it's a thicker oil, there's a theory, and it honestly makes sense, that because it's thicker, you'll get better lubrication between the bearing and the crankshaft. Now, one of the problems with these cars is they tend to spin bearings a lot from just worn oil and just they, they, it breaks down over time, obviously. The oil gets thinner, you get contaminants in the oil, which also make it thinner, it breaks it down, and it's just, it's not happy. Eventually, if you start running old, broken down oil after a while, the crankshaft and the bearings obviously aren't going to be happy, and they're going to want to separate. They're not going to want to be with each other anymore because they just have no more lubrication, and you're going in raw dogging it. Don't raw dog your crankshaft. Not like we actually know we're doing that. But anyway, so the theory behind Rotella T6 is because it is a thicker oil, it is able to provide a little more protection between the crankshaft and the bearings. Okay, so like I was talking about, we're talking about viscosity before we jump into this oil analysis report, and then we're gonna jump into some of the contaminants and the materials, the metals that you'll find in your reports. Now, for my car, I've been using this Castrol 5W30 GTX Ultra Clean. It's worked pretty well for me in the past. I've got a couple used quarts of it sitting around, um, but this is the first oil that we're gonna be running through the test only because it's already in the car and I've already tested it. So the test that we're gonna be going into is gonna be this oil. But in regards to this, this is 5W30 oil. It is recommended by Subaru to use 5W30 oil. Now, like I said, some people use 5W40. Now the 5W, the 40s, the 5W, the 30s, those are gonna be the grade of the oil. So essentially the 5 5W is going to be the performance of the oil in cold weather, essentially the viscosity of it, how thickness it is. And then the second number, the 40 or in my case 30 on this oil, is going to end up being the viscosity of the oil at the higher temperature range, which is generally 212 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Celsius is what they run these tests at. Now they pour a little bit of this oil through a small 
orifice and they measure the time it takes to go from point A to point B and that's essentially how they measure the viscosity of one of the of oil in general. Higher grade oil, the more thick it's gonna be, the longer it's gonna take. So it's gonna be more viscous and it's gonna be more thick as it runs through that orifice. Now, when it comes to those thicker viscosity oils, it's also to remember that oil thins out when it heats up. So when your engine gets up to operating temperature, it's obviously going to heat up and thin out, which is going to be an important factor to keep in mind when you're actually choosing the oil that you want to run. But hopefully some of these tests that we're going to be going over in the future helps you decide which oil you do want to end up running. So when you do have those higher grade oils and they do warm up to operating te temperature, you can end up overheating your oil, which will reduce the lifespan of the oil and it is going to thin it out more, which is going to degrade that oil a lot faster. So it's important to remember that when you're choosing the right weight oil, I mean, I would generally stick to the manufa manufacturer specs, but we're going to find out in this series of which one we actually want to go with. But heat is not the only thing that'll degrade your oil. Something else that'll degrade your oil, you can have moisture, you can have fuel, you can have any other contaminants in there which will help thin that oil out, which is something that you don't want to do. And so like we're talking about, if you do end up with contaminants in your oil, fuel is a big one and it can tell you a lot. So when you get your oil tested with Blackstone Labs and any other retailers out there who are testing oil, you'll end up seeing the flash point of your oil. The flash point is going to be a known temperature which the oil is going to give off vapors that can ignite. Generally for this oil it's about 385 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit. 385 degrees Fahrenheit. Now what that means if it flashes below that point, you're getting fuel into your oil. So essentially this can be a cause or a sign that you're getting too much fuel into the cylinders, which means your AFR is running way too rich. So not all of that fuel is igniting and it's seeping down on the cylinder walls through the piston rings then going into the oil pan. This is going to end up degrading that oil a lot quicker like we were talking about. It's going to thin it out and it's going to make it so it's not as lubricating, which can lead to spun bearings and other detrimental issues with your car. So now that we've kind of talked about the viscosity and the flash point aspect of things, we're going to talk about some of the minerals and the metals that you'll find in your oil analysis report and just what potential reasons for them might be if they are elevated. So the first one we're going to talk about is aluminum. Aluminum could be failing pistons, could be failing bearings. Um, I'm not going to go into every single one of these. I'm just going to touch on on some of the major ones, um, but I'll link everything right down below in the description so that way you guys can see the full report of what each metal could uh, potentially mean if you have elevated signs of it. But the second one we're going to touch on is uh, calcium. Calcium could be seawater, could be assembly grease, could be normal grease, anything else that might be getting in your oil that could be increasing those calcium levels. The next one we're going to touch on real quickly is chromium. So chromium could be cylinder liners, it could be piston rings, it could be coolant contamination. There's a whole line of things that that one could be, but just remember it doesn't always mean it's detrimental. Another one you're going to end up seeing is iron. So iron could be cylinder liners, could be the crankshaft, could be the valves, could be a whole whole laundry list of things. But I mean, it, when you're going through your oil analysis reports, you can kind of connect the dots with elevated levels to see which one might be causing what. The next one we're gonna touch on is lead. Um, that's just a coolant contamination as well. So maybe a head gasket is failing, coolant's getting the oil somewhere else. We're gonna jump down to nickel because I don't wanna go over every single one of these in the video itself. Uh, like I said, it'll be down below. But nickel could be your valves, your valve springs, your valve guides, uh, could be fuel contamination. So the last two that we're gonna touch on just in the video itself. Um, is gonna be titanium and silver. So silver could be a sign of the bearings are going out. Titanium could be turbine components, could be valves, could be springs, could be, could be a multiple of both if you're very unlucky. But the, I mean, we're just gonna touch on a couple of these. Like I said, everything's gonna be down below so that way you can look at the entire list and compare it. If you get your report back, you wanna see what might be causing what. But now we're gonna look at my report and kind of see how this Castrol GTX Ultra Clean 5W30 actually did in comparison to the actual what we, what we think it might do, I guess. I don't know, let's just find out. So you guys may have seen some of these little beakers or test tubes sitting around in the background of some of the videos in the past. So this was kind of leading up to it, but I wanted to give just a visual representation to you guys to show you guys what the oil actually looks like. So this is Castrol GTX 5W30 Ultra Clean. You can see it's nice, clear, see-through, and it's a good looking oil. It's pretty viscous. You can see right there, it's 5W30. Now this is the same oil after 3000 miles. So just to give you guys a comparison, of what uh, we're actually looking at in this report. But this is also 5W30. This is the exact same oil. This one's just been run through the car for 3,000 miles. Now, I am gonna be running the same oil. I still have the exact same oil in the car. I just took a sample out. But I'm gonna be running this oil to 4,000 and 5,000 miles to get exact oil analysis reports also, just to find out when the optimal time to change your oil actually is. But I wanna read you guys the report that I got back from Blackstone Labs, word for word. So, <clears throat> this is from Blackstone Labs. Um, all of my values, I'll post a copy of this uh, with my personal information obviously deleted off so you guys 
can't mail weird things to my house. So I don't, that might be a little awkward, but I'm gonna read you guys this report word for word. So, uh, this is a great first report for your WRX. Universal averages for the EJ25 motor show expected wear levels for oil run about 3,800 miles. Your sample saw slightly less use in that and metals are all lower than average, which is a great indication that you've got a happy and healthy engine under the hood. The viscosity held up well to use, reading in a range of 5W30. No contaminants like fuel or coolant showed up to spoil things. Low insolubles show good oil filtration, which results this good. We think that going up to 5,000 miles should be no problem at all. So that's word for word from Blackstone on their oil analysis report. Now, like I said, I'm gonna run this oil to 4,000 and 5,000 miles to see when the best time to change it is based off of the metal values that we end up getting back. But all of the metal values that are in here are well below what they need to be. The viscosity level, the flash point, everything came back absolutely perfect for my car. My car is about 25,000 miles on it. You guys have seen the modifications that I've put on it. The only oil modifications I have on the car are the oil pickup tube, the oil pan, which increases oil capacity, and uh, the air oil separator. So all of that play into effect of how your oil is gonna read out. It's also wear levels of how you drive the car and everything else like that, but that also tags back to the reliability video that I did. But this is gonna be a good, I'm gonna post all of these. I don't know where. I'll post a link below so that way you guys can get a copy of these so that way you can see them, or I'll post it like in the corner of one of these videos somewhere as we're talking about it but that way you guys can see what this oil is actually doing. So like I said, this is the Castrol GTX 5W30 Ultra Clean Oil. After we've gone through the 5,000 mile interval with this one, we're gonna be doing, I think Motul next, 5W30. I think they have one called Extra Clean or E-Clean, something like that that we're gonna be running through the car next. After that one, we'll be doing Rotella T6, or I can reverse the combo, um, depending on what you guys want to see what the actual oil levels, oil levels are going to be. But please remember that it is gonna be different for every vehicle that is tested, depending on mileage, how the car is driven, everything like that. But using my car as a control should give a good representation of what all of these oils are actually doing, so that way we can read these. So with that, we're gonna wrap this video up and um, keep going on this mini series, because I am so excited. For oil. All right, so like I said, you guys, that is going to wrap up this oil analysis video uh, part one. I'm really open to feedback on these ones for any information that you guys want added into these videos. Um, any additional information, I can read you guys the exact levels that I'm getting back on these reports and what they should be. Um, I'll run, like I said, I'm open to running oils as long as it's not royal purple. I refuse to run royal purple in, in my cars at all. Um, but I'll also keep taking samples like this so that way you guys can kind of see the visual representation between brand new oil, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 mile oil as we go through this mini series. Like I said, I'm extremely excited about this one. I've been planning this one for a while. I finally got back the first report. I'm going to be getting more back soon. Um, just as a reminder, remember we are doing that parent air oil separator giveaway. Uh, details will be down below in the description of how you guys can get entered into that one. It's going to be fantastic. Anyone's open to enter to it, even if you don't have a Subaru. Um, I mean, it's going to be any Perrin air oil separator. Like I said, I'm paying for this with my own money. Um, just the mod garage is helping and helping us out, getting it shipped out to whoever the winner's gonna end up being. But I just appreciate, I genuinely really appreciate all the time that you guys spend here on the channel and I wanna show that appreciation back by doing this. Um, but like I said, anyways, if this video helped you guys out, go ahead, smash, stab, do whatever you gotta do. Turn that little thumbs up blue. That rhymed unintentionally. Ooh, and if you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, we're. I'm gonna randomly pick a corner because I don't know where I'm gonna do it at today. Ooh, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, homies. Woo!